So the next topic is stall warning system. Now if the aircraft happened to stall, in that case, we must have a provision where the pilot must know that the aircraft is approaching the stalling condition or is about to stall. So we look into the stall warning and protection system that are installed in the small aircraft as well as in the large aircraft. So initially we started to look at the stall system installed in the smaller aircraft. The most simple form of stall warning system is the pneumatic stall warning system installed in the smaller aircraft. Now if you try to recall what exactly happens during stalling. So stall happens because of negative pressure. So somehow if we can simulate a negative pressure in that case, we can know about the stalling condition. Now, if that negative pressure gives some sound, that would make the pilot know that the aircraft is approaching the stalling condition. What exactly I mean? Now, if you recall what exactly happens during stalling, stalling happens because the angle of attack gets very higher, very high. And as the angle of attack gets very high, so at the lower surface, we have the positive pressure and at the top, in general, we have got the negative pressure. And if you recall, lift happens because, not because of the positive pressure on the upper surface, but because of the negative pressure on the lower surface. Because the intensity of the negative pressure on the upper surface is much higher than the intensity of the positive pressure on the lower surface. And because of the negative pressure on the upper surface, we are having the stalling in the, uh, sorry, we are having the lift. And stalling happens when the angle of attack becomes so high that the flow stops initially and then the flow reverses its direction. So quite natural that if the flow reverses its direction, hey, if the flow reverses its direction, that means there is a change in velocity. And if there is a change in velocity, there is a change in pressure. And if somehow we can measure or sense this pressure, then we can know about the stalling condition. Right? So stalling happens because of negative pressure. So in this, in a normal flight condition, now this is how it looks like the diagram. You can see here we have got something called the you know, there, at the leading edge, the whole thing is mounted at the leading edge. This is the leading edge. And you can see I've got some sort of a slot here. And then some transducer. Why transducer? Because I need to convert one form of energy to the another form. So I got some transducer here. Transducer operating device, insulating gasket and transducer mounting plate. So the transducer is mounted against this mounting plate, which is finally mounted in this cutout portion. And this cutout portion is part of the leading edge. Stalling happens because of the flow reversal. And if there is a flow reversal, there is negative pressure. So somehow if we can measure, measure the negative pressure, in that case we can know about the stalling condition. Now if you think in a logical way, if you, if you are asked to, if you are given a whistle and you are asked to make sound with the whistle so you need to blow air isn't it either you need to blow air or you need to suck in either case you will get some sound isn't it so the stalling device is somewhat like that because whenever blowing air or sucking in air is equivalent to applying positive pressure or negative pressure using your mouth isn't it so in place of mouth, I can also use the normal air to apply pressure against this blow horn and then the blow horn would emit some sound. Okay. So in this system, we have got a plenum chamber and this is mounted to the wing plating edge. This is covered and sealed by an adjustable plate. So this is the adjustable plate. 
that they are referring to it is the trans uh, the the wind <coughs> the plate is adjusted so that in normal flight attitude a slot in the plate coincide with the stagnation point of the wing the plenum chamber is connected to a tube by a uh, horn and reed assembly in the cabin so horn and reed assembly means the blow horn it is attached to the blow horn using some pipelines as the angle of attack is increased the slot in the adjustable plate effectively moves up from the stagnation point into an area of progressively lower air pressure we have got a straight and level flight condition during straight and level flight condition this adjustable vane is in line with the incoming air but when the angle of attack is getting increased so it is no more in line with the incoming air and it creates so this adjustable plate effectively moves from the stagnation point initially at the stagnation point and from the stagnation point it moves into an area of lower pressure the slot means the opening is positioned that it reaches a low pressure area sufficient to draw the uh, reed and the horn assembly so this low pressure air moves and it it creates low pressure and then the air gets drawn into the uh, horn assembly which ultimately gives some noise or some sound <coughs> so the whole system is about blowing in some air to generate some sound if i got a normal whistle to make sound with the whistle i need to blow air or suck in air in either case we will get some sound isn't it so here also we are getting the sound from the same source but then in this case we are not emitting the air pressure from our mouth but instead the pressure drops or the change in pressure that happens during the stalling condition that change in pressure is used to make sound of the whistle and in this case we won't call it as whistle we have got a specific name for it we call that as the blow horn okay so in a normal condition what happens you have got this stagnation point the air comes and hit at the leading edge and then on top we have got the positive pressure sorry negative pressure and the below we have got the negative uh, positive pressure isn't it and the pressure keeps on in the lower surface at the leading edge the pressure is maximum and as you keep from leading edge to the trailing edge the pressure keeps on decreasing and the uh, during the entire course of time the pressure pressure happens to be positive on the lower surface uh, on the upper surface at the leading edge you have got the maximum negative pressure as you keep from mo moving from the leading edge to the trailing edge the negative pressure intensity keeps on changing so it becomes slightly lesser negative and finally at the trailing edge the pressure at the lower surface and the upper surface almost same not exactly same even though the pressure at the lower surface still is higher because still it is positive but then the difference in pressure get keep on decreasing and so there is because we know the air move from a high pressure to a low pressure region and everywhere along this entire periphery of the aerofoil there is this high pressure and low pressure region and so there is a movement of air the circulation so the air comes and hit at the leading edge and then it divides so the point where it hits is this stagnation point and on top we have got negative uh, pressure below we have got the positive pressure so we have got stagnation point zero velocity and then somewhere along the periphery somewhere the velocity is increasing and somewhere the velocity is decreasing now whenever the air velocity changes or if the stagnation point happens to move slightly up or down in that case the pressure distribution would change as well because it can only move up or down only if the velocity changes or the pressure distribution changes and this up and down movement of the stagnation point happens if the velocity changes or the pressure changes 
and when that happens the because of the change in the pressure now this pressure is being fed to the horn assembly and finally the horn assembly will emit some sound and that's how the pilot will get to know regarding the stall condition okay Now we'll try to look about the stall warning system installed in large aircraft. So to measure the stall and to know about the stalling condition because stalling happens when the angle of attack is very high so maybe we would require an angle of attack indicator. and whenever the stall happens the difference in pressure between the upper and lower surface become abnormally high right and that abnormal high difference in pressure if that can be used somehow to measure the stalling how that can be used we will try to look into this so this is how the angle of attack looks uh, angle of attack indicator looks like you can see here we have got some sort of a probe some paddle and this paddle is dividing this whole thing in different chambers and the probe also got some heater here because this is exposed to the environment and there is a possibility of ice formation and to get rid of this ice we need the heater now in a normal condition if the aircraft is flying in a straight and level flight condition the air in each of this chamber that we are getting here are almost equal and they are being balanced but then the moment the aircraft is approaching the stalling condition because of the difference in pressure the air in each of these chambers are no more balanced and because the amount of air in these chambers are not balanced so this chamber try to move the moment this chamber tries to move it moves against some resistor as you can see here in this diagram against some resistor the moment when it moves against the resistor there is a change in the potential whenever there is a change in potential that change in potential is being fed to a motor now what exactly this motor is in stock now we have got the control stick okay now below this control stick if we got some motor so this control stick would have could have some gears in it inbuilt below and these gears could be riding against a motor and this motor gets its power supply only when this potential changes that means the potential the change in potential that happens because of the aircraft approaching the stalling condition and that would generate this you know change in the pressure distribution along the four chambers and that would allow the resistor value to change and generate the potential and this potential is being fed to the motor which finally is meshing against the gears which are part of the control rod now this motor starts moving because of this potential now this is not a general motor this motor is not balanced it is unbalanced motor so one side heavy and one side lighter and because it is not initially balanced because one side heavy and one side low uh, uh, less in weight so the moment it tries to move it won't move smoothly but it would wobble there will be wobbling motion and this being part because it is being meshed using some gear to the control rod that means the movement will be transferred to the control rod as well isn't it and the control rod would also start shaking because the movement is wobbling so the control rod would start shaking and with the control rod starts shaking that means the pilot will get to know about the stalling condition 
This is known as stick shaker. Okay. So you can see here, this is how the stick shaker looks like. You can see some rotor. So the rotor here is the one that I mentioned, which is unbalanced. And it is moving against some gears here. And this gear is actually part of this control rod. Okay. Any doubt? Now, if we want to prevent the aircraft from getting stalled, even if the pilot does not take any corrective measure to prevent the stalling, let's say there could be some situation where the pilot slept. Who knows? Or even if it is shaking, maybe he is in some, you know, his mind is somewhere else. Who knows? You know, you cannot predict human mind. So, you cannot trust human mind, but you can trust the machine. So, why not go trust the machine? So, what we can do is, the same current or the potential that we got, first of all, we need to amplify it because the value is less. And that can be fed to some motor and that motor now with the current being fed into it will start moving attached to this motor is the actuator which is attached to the elevator so that with the movement of the motor the actuator starts moving with the movement of the actuator the elevator starts moving because if I need to get rid of the stalling condition, I need to make the aircraft move nose down, isn't it? And to move, make the aircraft go nose down, I need to operate the elevator. So if I want the stalling to be controlled on its own without any effort by the pilot, in that case, I need a situation or I need to uh, get a situation where the elevator can move on its own. For the elevator to move on its own, it is only possible if during the stalling condition we manage to generate some potential and that potential is being fed to the motor and then that motor moves the actuator and that actuator moves the elevator. Okay. And that is how the stalling is being controlled. No. What are the functions it must have? Any type of stall warning device must have a provision to detect the stall, quite natural, isn't it? So detect the stall. And then it must take automatic action to prevent the stall. So detecting stall means shaking or taking automatic action means the elevator moving on its own. Now, because of this stalling condition, the airflow gets changed. The airflow pattern gets changed. And because the airflow pattern gets changed, so it could lead to engine shutdown. Because there is no air going inside the engine. And it is more vulnerable in the rear engine. So, if that happens that the engine shut down, we must have a provision of 
reigniting it as well. So auto ignition. So in some aircraft, particularly the rear engine, the airflow get disturbed because of the stalling condition, and there could be a flame out situation <coughs> at the stalling condition or near to the stalling condition. To prevent this, the auto ignition circuit need to be initiated. Now the flap, the slab, the Kruger flap, modulation, all this position can affect the stalling angle as well. So also this need to be controlled during stalling. So whenever we need to design an anti-stalling system, we need to keep in mind that we must have a provision to detect stalling. We must have a provision that if the stalling happens, it can be reverted back to normal flight. During stalling, there is a possibility of engine flame out and we must have a provision of auto ignition. During stalling, to overcome the stalling, we might be required to operate the flap, Kruger flap. So we must have a provision to move all these things on its own. If I need to recover from the stalling in automated mode. Okay. So I told you about this stick shaker. And then if the elevator moves, that means the stick need to be pushed as well, isn't it? So this provision is known as stick pusher. Then we must have this tall warning computer which receives all the signals from the sensor and initiates the warning or the control movement. So all this sensor which will sense this and then will send the information to the computer and then the computer will process this information and then initiate the uh, warning action and the necessary corrective action. And then quite naturally you need to have the stall warning sensor. Okay? Any doubt? We must have the ground and the flight sensing. To prevent any unwanted operation of the system on the ground, if you do not want the stall warning system to operate on the ground, there could be a possibility that the stall warning system start operating on the ground. So to prevent any inadvertent operation of the stall warning device on the ground, we must have a system where there could be some switch which can sense that the landing gear is down and locked and during that condition it must have a provision where it can isolate the entire stalling circuit from uh, from from uh, giving any false stall indication system uh, stall indicating uh, <coughs> signals right so you must have some provision to isolate it a test flight facility should be built into the system and then we have got the max sensing speed over which the aircraft critical Mach number may cause the high speed stall or the flame out to prevent this and input to the computer from the main Mac switches or the air data computer may be included to give a stall warning at high Mach number because stalling as we know can be the low speed stalling and high speed stalling isn't it the normal stalling is the low speed stalling but if the stalling happens in high speed during Mac when Mac number is more than Mac 1 and all so that is high speed stalling so you must have a provision to differentiate between low speed stalling and high speed stalling Okay. So whatever I told you so far, there is all. Now here they have mentioned about nitrogen system. Nitrogen is stored at 15,000, 15, 
1500 PSA in a reservoir. So this is to because sometimes the stall warning device we, we require as I told the test doing test and also we need to include this nitrogen system and all these additional things are to be included in the system check for it maybe yeah, because time is already 1150 so we'll look into this remaining part which is very less around 5 uh, 10 15 minutes we would require that we will do in the next class and then and then remaining two class will finish up this uh, the remaining part